Welcome back to the shop. Uh, the woodworking stuff is pretty much done. Uh, the only thing really left now is the sliding hardware for the slide for the door slide to the thing to make the mechanism. Only thing left is the hardware to make the door slide now. So I've kind of gone back and forth about what design I wanted to use, and I landed on. Um, I'm looking over here because it's on the floor right there. Um, I landed on using Unistrut, or they call it Super Strut here, but it's Unistrut, which is kind of a common thing used for wire tracing, chasing wire, and, and um, just sort of a, it's a lightweight steel, but it's plenty heavy duty for what we need. Um, it's almost an eighth of an inch thick. It's stamped steel. It's bent around. You'll see a picture of it at some point. Um, so I've decided I'll make some trucks that will ride within that Unistrut. It's got the neat kind of curled under sort of the the steel is sort of curled under and it makes a good rail. Or it should make a good rail. We'll find out in the end when it's done. Um, so I've got some, I picked up some bearings and I'm just going to make some some trucks that the bearings will be mounted to that will ride along this rail. And I've done up a drawing here. Uh, oh, actually, here is a rendering of the truck and it'll show it sort of <clears throat> in the context of the of the Unistra as well, so. <clears throat> okay, so that little rail system should work pretty well to hold the door. You'll see there's a bolt in the center that goes into the top of the door and then the two rails, the two bearing trucks, the two axles, I guess, um, hold the two bearings that ride inside the Unistra, and that's what does all the load bearing. Um, there's some, I personally have a little bit of concern about steel bearing races riding on the steel Unistra. It might be too bumpy a ride or something, or just something that might bug me. So I got some bearings, you'll see they're a little bit smaller diameter uh, than the amount of space I have inside that Unistra. And that's just in case I need to turn some wheels, or some tires, I should say, um, for those bearings. Because I may have that roll on uh, nylon, or I've got, I might actually have, I think I have some one inch diameter um, uh, Delrin that might work out for this. Um, but just something to maybe absorb some of the bumpiness of, because the inside of the Unistrut is just a sawn, or a stamped actually, or maybe laser cut or plasma cut. It's not a smooth, it's not machined or anything, so it's kind of rough. Um, so that may or may not be necessary, we'll see. Um, if it turns out to be necessary, that's no big problem. I've got plenty of room to move that up and down. Um, so this is the drawing of the part that I've got to make. It's a piece of, I'm going to use a, a slab of aluminum. These are actually the two parts I need to do. I've got a slab of chunk of aluminum into which I will put, hold the bearings and the bolt that goes down into the top of the door. Um, this has it drawn up as three inches, but it turns out my current supply of three quarter inch or thick enough stock is five inches wide, and this is a non-critical length. I don't really care how long it is. In fact, longer may actually be more stable. So I'm just going to take this width, whatever it is, use the dimensions there that are on that drawing to come in and mount, locate my holes, but it, it doesn't need to be a precise thing. So um, I'm just going to start with the five ish. It's something like five inches long. Something like five inches. It's a little hair under five inches, about four and 15 sixteenths. Um, but it's whatever this is, and I'm going to machine it nice and parallel and, and square it all up. So whatever that stock turns out to be, that's what the truck's dimensions will be. Um, I just need two pieces. I'm going to cut off a chunk, and we're going to do about an inch and a half-ish, so I have some room for machining. I'm cleaning up the bandsaw and edges and, and that sort of thing. Um, so we're just going to get after it. I'm going to cut a couple of chunks, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so we've got our two pieces here, rough cut to length. They're a lot oversized, a lot oversized. They're like, 
um, an inch and three quarters or so. Um, doesn't matter much. There's a lot to clean up anyways. All the machine, all the ends, all the mis mm -hmm. all sides will be machined in some form. Um, the cool part is that I know this was extruded, so this face here, these two faces are already pretty much parallel, and I can trust that enough to clamp it. I don't have to go crazy with, you know, unknown surfaces and stuff like that. Because these things don't have to be that precise in the first place. I just have to make sure I get a, get a little bit of the burr off and then make work with that. So we're going to just stick one in the... In fact, we're going to do this a couple at a time here. Try to do as much as possible by gang cutting since I don't really have too much of a concern for... They don't have to be precise, they don't have to fit one another, they don't have to match one another, they are dimensionally. They are, d dimensionally speaking, they are setting their own dimensions. Wouldn't mind if I had a little exercise here to, to practice my precision, but first thing I need to do is get a straight, a straight edge here, so got that clamped in well enough. I'm just gonna, I got a half inch roughing end mill, it's like a corn cob type end mill, and I'm just gonna get touched off and then machine the machine the top surface flat and I'll bring in with a better cut a better picture than this alright so now we've just got a touch off here well we have to turn it on and then we can touch off I'll just find my what looks like my likeliest high spot it doesn't really matter much because I'm gonna be powering through it as it is I think our spot's going to be over here somewhere. Right there. Okay, right there is touch off. That's going to be zero. Set my dial. Let's, uh, let's take 30. That should be enough on this machine. That's the top surface, face one. Um, for the woodworkers out there, I just jointed one edge. Yeah, I think the climb passes are a little rougher than I'd like. I'm wondering if I shouldn't take another. Yeah, it's fine. It is actually fine. Um, so we're gonna get all raised up here. And we're gonna flip the parts over. Put them on some parallels. Actually, they don't need to be on parallels. The the vice jaw, the vice base is parallel. So just got to make sure it seats. Yeah, those are good. Okay, do this. Make sure we clean up the face there. And we'll set them down. And you see how they want to sit different. So I'm gonna maybe do this. Yeah, that's better. And then we'll get them to seat. They're all seated very nicely. We'll let that sit down. I'm going to just barely snug on it. And I'm going to... Just get them tapped in. That's pretty snug. And then we'll do the exact same thing. Okay, so that, I've just got to work out my directions because clearly I'm a novice and don't know what the heck I'm doing. Um, but I need to get to size now, so we're going to just rough because this thing does not need to be precision. I'm just going to do a quick, what are we right now? 190, what is that? 90? 690? 1690? Looks like didn't give myself a very good place to measure here. Let's 
What's that say? Yeah, it's 690. Yep, 1690. So we're going to go for 125. Or, yeah, 1250. We have a lot to go. And the higher it is, the taller it is, the more bulk I need in the thing, in the balance. So I'm going to go with as little as I can. So we're going to try cutting the other way because that will make it uh, conventional milling. Okay, we're going to do another... Oh, heck, let's take... Oh, it moved up, I guess. Let's take a full... Uh, that was 30, I think. So we're going to do another 30. I'm off the head this time. And just go after. So what I can do, since this cutter just made this face, it is now at zero on this side. So all I got to do is to get centered. All I want to do is find center here. Oh, you know, I still need to find these edges to get it in the middle. Shoot. I'm going to need to put, I need to get my center finder in first and find this end and this end. Then I can get to this center and then this end and this end. Then I can get to this center. Actually, you know what? We're going to do these. Do I want to do them now while they're in there? It doesn't have to be, again, we don't need precision, precision here. We are just a hair under five. We're at 4945. Yeah, 4945 is where we landed here. Yeah, it's tough to get into that there, but well, we could do 4930. Yeah, 4930 is where we are. That's where we are on size. So 4930, half of that, 450 plus another 15, 465. So f two 465 would be where we would want to go to get to center. Two 465, right there. That should also, yes it did, alright, okay. I'm just going to make a, a bozo mark here as my point of truth. I should probably have it locked when I do that though, eh? Okay, that is where I want that to be. I think I am perfectly happy with eyeballing that, um, but I'm going to try. We'll try to get to that point. So we were at two, two, four, sixty-five, two, four, six, five. Okay, so we have to get two thousand four hundred and sixty-five thousandths with this dial, which does sixty-two and a half thou. So I'm going to do this in increments of. 50 and re-zero because it's a pain in the ass any other way. First thing I'm going to do is lose this quarter inch. So let's do 25, let's do 250 thou first. So here's, um, are we locked? Yeah, let's unlock. We'll go, there's one, there's a 50, re-zero. There's 100, re-zero. There's 150, re-zero. There's 200, re-zero. 250, okay. Now we are technically at the real zero. That puts the center of this thing right on that edge. Now we need to go 2465. So let's go to, two, let's get our 2000 in there first. Jeez, that's going to take a lot of... A lot of runs. Um, we can raise you two, four, six, five. 
All right, we've got to move two thousandths, two thousand thousandths, so two full inches. This takes a while. There's 50. We're doing it 50 increments at a time. There's eight. God, this is a painful process. I don't like this process. I'm just going to go there. I'm, I've lost my patience for it. I think that is a good cause to argue for having a DRO. All right, I'm going to go with... You look really close. Right there. Where's that center cutter? Yeah, okay, so... Now I can just sort of go, hey, how far are you? Now, are you about the same on this side? No, you are not. That's pretty close now. <laughs> there. That looks all right. Let's see how you are here. Yeah, I'm going to call that close enough to half. Now I want to get fairly close to halfway on the y-axis here, but that shouldn't be too bad because I'm just going to leave a sixteenth on either side. It's only an eighth bigger. Um, okay, our depth on this is 700, and I'm going to do it all power or all under micro so that I can sneak up on it and I'm gentle to this plunge. So here we go. Let's get a touch off. Touched off. Zero my dial. Everything else is solid, right? Yes, okay. Here we are. I'm going to set a depth stop here so I can manually hand feed that the next time. Here's my brush. We're going to make this depth stop stay this time, I hope. Okay, and that way I can do it with the quill feed. There we go. Okay, pop this little guy out and go up. That made a bit of a mess of the cutter, but not too bad. Okay, so we're good there. Back in, and we're just going to move forward on the Y till it's about centered up again here. Get a little closer here. About, about right there and lock her down. Like that. I think we can give you a little juice. Yeah. I think I'd like to give it a little bit more the other way. There. About right there. Okay, so we can do this plunge now. There's my zero. I gotta do this at 250. I gotta do this 700. So what I'll do, I know what I will do, is I will grab. couple of these guys and 750 will not hurt me any more than 700 will honestly so I'm gonna take this got these little brass setup bars that I use on the router table stick them on my stop send it up and now send it up to that point now that is 750 away from this point in fact, we can go even snartier. So if I put this into manual right now, like so, and I zero at my upward, if I take off 50 right here, whoop, come up 50. Let's 
Hold on, we gotta find our. There's that. Right about there was zero. We'll come up to this, get all our backlash out, and then we'll come up 50. 50 is 10 on that, because it's 60. There. Now, if I lock you, this is going to be 50 thou shy. So now we can put this up. And now, ooh, that's on there, good. Come on now. Come out of there. Now, this stop is now 750 from this point, which is 50 too high. There's math. It's, trust me, it'll work. Stupid like a fox. Okay, now I can use the hand feeder instead of the dial. So we're going to do this hole next. This. It's good. I had, I guess the electronics did not like how heavy a cut that was and it kept jamming me up. But in the end, we babied it through and we're good. It's done. That, that cut is done. Um, we got to loosen here. So we gotta put, we're going to put that center drill back in the chuck. We're back in the collet and uh, switch back to this thing and uh, make our center mark for those holes and then I can put them on parallel. Actually, I'm going to drill it on the drill press, I think. I feel safer on that. I feel like doing that there. Um, okay, that is ready to do this. We can lose our stop again. Don't need that anymore. Okay, ready to do this cut. Yeah, that's turned. There we go, right there. Okay, try not to make it too loud. Good. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. All right. That'll do. Okay, these holes are now prepped and ready to go. We are ready for the other two sets of holes and whatnot. So um, I'm going to pull these out and show you. Show you what we've done. Dirt. Okay. So once we got them cut to length, we drilled our counter bore. You see down in there? And then that marks the, the hole location for the for the through hole, for the 5 16 through hole. Let's see if I can make it so you can see that. Yeah, you can see that now. Can you, can you kind of see it? Let's see. There you go. Now you can see it. So that's the center point for that hole. And that's what the cap screw will bear against. And we'll just clean up that, that counter board just a little bit. But you'll see here, I put one down. There it is. This is just about right for that size head, so that'll work. Okay, when we come back, we'll do lay them down, and we'll do the holes for the we'll do the holes for the uh, bearings next. That'll take a little measuring, centering, and finding locations. So we'll be back in a bit.